January 27th, 6.15 a.m., 650 miles off the Alaskan coast, three storm systems pummel the cruise ship MV Explorer. The hundreds of students aboard have donned life jackets in case they need to abandon ship. A 50-foot wave has smashed into the vessel. Now, water pours through shattered windows into the bridge. In the engine room, Chief Engineer Neil Carney gets a call from the bridge. The water is flooding the ship's electronic controls. Within seconds, one of the main engines died. I sent one of the lads aft to initiate emergency steering, and it was uh, a short period after that uh, that the second engine went down. You know, in rough weather like this, you don't want to lose propulsion without steering, and you're at the the mercy of the uh, waves. 30 to 40 foot waves pound the crippled vessel, knocking its passengers off their feet. Already a faculty member has a broken rib and a crewman has dislocated his hip. May I have your attention please for those, and please listen carefully, on decks two, three, uh -oh. and four. Please proceed slowly and in as orderly a fashion as possible to deck five. At 6.30 a.m., Assistant Dean Ken Gaither takes one more step toward abandoning ship. He orders his students to move to the deck where the lifeboats are stored. I think it's very clear in my voice that um, there was real reason for worry uh, when that announcement was made. Students Mike Green and Adam Cadillus are in their room still videotaping when they hear the announcement. Mike tries to make light of the situation. It's like we might die, all right. Yes, Dane. I gotta get going here. I guess at this point, it probably should have turned serious, but uh, you, you can maybe tell in the video that we still were just kind of laughing. We tried to be pretty lighthearted and um, make some jokes out of the situation, but I mean, deep down, I think we were both scared. One deck below, 20-year-old Rhea San Angelo struggles to get up the stairs. I was trying to hold back tears because I, I was trying to be strong and, you know, just do whatever they told me to do so that we can make it out of the situation safely. When the students reach Deck 5, the Explorer's crew prepares them to board the lifeboats. At this point, we're thinking we've seen this movie before. This is, it's just like Titanic. And I think there was just pure adrenaline at that moment. A very large wave came in and punched out the big center window in the bridge. For the first time, the captain explains exactly what's happened. In fact, the wave was higher than the bridge, so we had a lot of water, and it shorted out all our equipment up there. And that's when it started to kind of hit that this is a pretty serious situation, that we might be boarding in these lifeboats in the middle of the ocean. I thought to myself, there's no way any of us will make it 10 minutes in that water. Down in the engine room, Neil Carney and his crew work frantically to override the water damaged controls, which keep shutting down the engines. There's no telling how long it will take. Getting the engines back online is a priority, the utmost priority. Carney has put out a distress call to the Coast Guard. An HC-130 rescue plane and two cutters are en route. But Carney knows evacuating this many people in high seas is dangerous. His only hope is to restore the ship's power. 7 a.m. On deck five, students prepare for the order to abandon ship. People are holding out to the railings. We're sliding so hard and so fast against each other that we're knocking people over. And you know, we're falling down over in our life jackets, sliding across the floor. Down below, Carney and his staff try again. This time, one engine roars to life. To be able to start the, the engine, we disabled the emergency stop system that was actually shutting down, trying to shut down the engine all the time. With one engine, the Explorer may be able to limp out of harm's way. Students are told to find safe areas where they can ride out the storm. Some take refuge in stairwells and hallways, but many stay on deck five, afraid to move. Every time a big wave would hit, you would hear screaming, and you would see the entire part of uh, 
group of people on one side of the ship slide across the floor to the other side. You couldn't control where you were going, who you slid on, who you crushed into the wall. It was just, you know, sorry, I'm about to hit you, I'm sorry. Actually, a good amount of people who were thinking that maybe we're gonna have to get into the lifeboats, maybe we're gonna die. A lot of people were, were assuming the worst and uh, obviously very scared. It was like a quiet panic going through, like people were just kind of lost in their thoughts and maybe they didn't believe it, this, we were really going through this. The MV Explorer is too badly damaged to reach its original destination of South Korea and the injured people need immediate treatment. Finding a closer port is imperative. There was a lot of pressure to be able to get the engines back working. Carney's team scrambles to get the ship's second engine up. The sooner the captain has full power, the more quickly he can get the ship to safe waters. If the rolling had continued, there would have been quite a lot more injuries to persons and equipment. 